about that at the same time. It's a Tulsa time. It is Tulsi time. There we go. There we go. So why is it Tulsi time? Well, uh, by the way, this is the only time we're going to be talking about impeachment today. Yes. Just, yeah. the way you, just the way you guys like it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. Awesome. So why are we talking about this? Well, Tulsi Gabbard chose to abstain from voting uh, for the impeachment, which is a decision I support. I Look, this is my own personal feeling. I'm not going to speak for anyone else here on the team. But I think this impeachment is going to be one big, ridiculous circus show. It's a distraction. There's all this focus on the impeachment, but there's a lack of focus on the fact that for 18 years, oh, my God, we were lied and we were wasting money for these ridiculous wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and everywhere else. But, hey, you know what? Priorities, the resistance against Trump and trying to impeach him. It's a distraction. And so Tulsi Gabbard uh, was calling for the pre President Trump censure. So uh, Hawaiian Representative Tulsi Gabbard is calling for Donald Trump censure on the, on the eve of the House vote of, uh, of the impeachment. Uh, the resolution which Gabbard planned to introduce late Tuesday suggests that the president put personal political gain over national interests. This is a quote from her. I'm taking this time for myself to be, to be able to review everything that's happened, all the information that's been put forward. And just all the factors that go into really trying to figure out what is what is the best action to take for our country and for our democracy. It's not as it's not a simple or easy decision to make. I think it's really important that every member of Congress cast their vote based on what's in the best interest of the country rather than based on political implications throughout my political life. Uh, I have always done my best to make decisions and cast votes based on what I believe is the right thing to do, even when that decision causes political damage to my quote unquote, you know, career reelection chances. That is not a factor for me in my decision making process whatsoever. I wholeheartedly agree with this statement. And let's remember this. Um, when we look at someone like Tulsi Gabbard, who's been fighting for the issues and who's been consistent with policies, I, I, I believe that this impeachment will, at the, in the long run, benefit Trump. I don't think he's going to get kicked out of office. And remember, if he does get kicked out of office, if the Senate actually votes to you know, basically kick him out, impeach him, uh, we get Pence. And I don't want Pence. And I think what Tulsi Gabbard did was pretty brave to do. Um, but we'll see what happens and how this all turns out because now if, if, if it does pass the House – which it probably will, uh, it goes in the Senate. So job well done, Democrats. You just gave it to the Republicans to do whatever they want with it now. There we go. So, there was uh, a super chat. Super chat. Um, directed at me. Oh. Uh, Kira's, uh, who, whose wellness <sighs> values continues. aligns with yours? I know, I know. And Tulsi what's, or Liz? What's hilarious is a lot has actually shifted in the last couple of weeks, oh mostly goodness. because one of, one of, the, big, one of the big reasons I, I supported Liz Warren is, A, I've been a big fan of Elizabeth Warren right. for a really, really long time, just full disclosure. I've, I've, I've loved her for a while. And so I, I was really rooting for her. And in fact, at the beginning of, of this whole primary, when, it was, when, when, I, when there were like 24 people in, I was really in this camp of like, maybe Liz Warren will be my candidate. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as time went on, I, I kind of withdrew and I was like, no, Bernie's still my, totally my candidate. Now what I'm noticing is her withdrawing largely from Medicare for All. Did you and hear that a whole bunch of alumni from the Obama team are now supporting her too? Oh, really? No, I hadn't heard that, yes, but that I, happened, um, I yeah. just listened. I can't even remember what podcast it was, but it went into depth about um, her you know, reversing out of her, her belief uh, in Medicare for All and that uh, basically it will be, uh, uh, what is it, not single payer. Uh, right. Uh, what is she, I can't think so of the Medicare word. Medicare option. Mer yeah. Medicare yeah. option for three yeah. years, so everybody can f be, see how awesome it is, mm -hmm. and then everybody will then automatically just enroll, right? And mm -hmm. and I I don't trust that. Um, one of the one of the reasons I was still in the Liz camp over the Tulsi camp was a lot of the the healthcare stuff. Not to mention, you know, uh, a, a large part of me was was thinking like, well, Liz Warren is a very viable candidate. Now she's slipping in the polls as well. I don't see that it happening as easily for mm -hmm. her. Um, and not to mention, uh, you know, Tulsi has come forward in regards to the impeachment and, and said that she does support impeachment, which was, which was also a piece yeah. of, 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 the, of the Tulsi campaign that I wasn't aligned with. So I'm starting to see some shifts in my own, mm -hmm. in my, my own perspective and opinions on that. And uh, someone earlier said on the chat, and I caught it, like maybe with Kira on the show more frequently, 
uh, we can we get, can add your toy. I think, I think I'll, it's what I'm about to say is that guys, up? we said when we get. Kira on the show, she's gonna move over. At, at this point, would you say you're uh, Tulsi or Warren, if you had to choose one? Well, Man, okay. if I if, okay, uh, which if again, I got, I'll, I'll remind everyone that like two weeks ago it was very much an easy. It was very Warren. much Warren, and it was now very much Warren, and um, we're moving and her, I, <laughs> and I, I I am moving on that actually, and it's really funny because I get to I get to have that feeling mm -hmm. that like I'm sure these Trump supporters have of like white knuckling their <laughs> candidate right? right and being like no, but um, gosh I I I think that. I think that I'd have to support Tulsi. Ooh. There you go, guys. Yes. Everyone, right. you have it. All right. It took us two weeks. We got her. All do, right. Do, do, yeah, do, do, well, do, and, do. and a lot a lot of news cycles <laughs> as okay. well. You well, got fair it. Enough. Hold on. But, but I think it's important that we do kind of bring this up because, you know, I can now mention the headlines that are going to happen tomorrow because – yeah, is it's a vote? Are the Democrats going to vote for this impeachment to go into the Senate? Yes. As much as I don't want it to happen, I think it's a joke. But I could see some pushback and some blowback happening towards Tulsi Gabbard, especially in regards to the fact that she chose to abstain and she's calling to censure President uh, Trump. And just real quick, just so you guys mm -hmm. understand what censure is, uh, censure is a former, uh, fo a formal and public group condemnation of an individual, often a group member whose actions run counter to the group's acceptable standards for individual behavior. In the United States, government censure is done when a body's members wish to publicly reprimand the president of the United States, a member of Congress, a judge, or a cabinet member. Um, it, it's a formal statement of disapproval. So uh, that's what it is, and I think pretty much that's the correct response to really dealing with Trump. Because he's a showman, he's going to yeah. know how to really manipulate this. He has Republicans in the Senate that support him. I really doubt the Republicans don't want to remove him. In fact, the GOP made it very clear that there will not be a Republican primary, even though there are two candidates going up against Trump. Mm -hmm. and, and granted, even if there was a Republican primary happening right, right off the bat, here, here's my a full analysis of it. Trump was going to be the nominee no matter but what was going to happen. Couldn't it be radio show host Joe Walsh <laughs> that we know and love? <laughs> Joe Walsh, who actually endorsed Trump during 2016, and actually, believe this or not, but I've heard this rumor that Trump actually blocked him on Twitter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was early on, too. I mean, again, this yeah. whole show is a joke, and at least I, I, res I respect Tulsi Gabbard's courage and, you know, and her being consistent on how she really views about, about this whole impeachment. It's going to be a distraction. Hold on. <laughs> um Mad Wolf, yay! Kira is now a Tulsi light. Tulsi light. Tulsi light. Oh. Tulsi light. We're, we're, yeah. we're live, folks. Well, thank you everyone for the super chats. You guys are really helping out this channel. I know Daniel. Do you have any kind of comments? I know Paul. If you have any comments um, on this. So yeah, this is good. So back back to the original point with Tulsi. I'm glad she just abstained. I think that fits the best path for her within this impeachment process from where she's at and what she's discussed. I wish many more people abstained. I think that's the best vote. You can do on this for all the reasons we've discussed in previous shows, and especially because now it's going to pass the House, the Senate's going to take it over, and all they're going to do for a few weeks is take Democrats, parade them in the Senate, figure out all the corrupt things they can about them, and then they're going to get to Trump and say, you did nothing wrong, right? And he's going to be like, yep. And he, they're going to be like, case dismissed. You're free to go. And Trump is going to be able to say, they tried to get me with Russia. Now they moved to a smaller country to the west of Russia. And I got through the fake Democrat. He's going to do something like that. His base is going to love it. The Democratic Party, again, will have failed the voters. And I will remind everyone again that the way they're trying to impeach him, like the, the idea of impeachment, we've talked about this, is not a bad idea. But get him for the real thing you can get him for. Here's a real thing to get Trump on. Trump is taking money from the Saudis in their hotel chains. He's building buildings in Saudi Arabia and has many, many Daniel, business Daniel, you're deals. asking people to work. You're asking Nancy Pelosi to do her job and actually do some yeah. work. I mean, come on. You, you asked too much right yeah. off the bat, so right then and there. We say that he does that, and then he gives Saudi Arabia billions of dollars in military equipment, which he then creates genocide in Yemen over. And that seems like something you could impeach him on. That's something I would get behind. But be like, hey, we heard a transcript of someone, that a thing that isn't actually a transcript, but someone heard someone else say about someone. Like Jimmy Dore had that great, uh, the clip he did from the, the impeachment hearing where the guy's, that's supposed to be the guy that quoted it was like, I heard it from someone that said they heard it from me, that I heard it from them, that they heard it from me. That it's like, <laughs> it's like, congratulations, Democrat. You failed at one of the most basic impeachments you can hit Trump with yeah. by hitting him up for like the one thing 
something that every Democrat, like Joe Biden is literally responsible twice over now. We've talked about the other time with Snowden for the exact same thing you're accusing Trump of. And it looks partisan, it acts partisan, it smells partisan when you had a dozen things you can actually hit him on. Yep, well, yep, we've yep. talked about that too on right. the show before. Like why wouldn't, why wouldn't they uh, mm-hmm. impeach him over the campaign finance, right? Um, well, because they'd be arrested too, exactly, or kicked you know. out of office too. And look, real quick though, um, I know that there's a lot of people right now protesting and happy that this impeachment's happening. Look, I get it, I understand it, and I know there's a lot, like a lot of rallies happening all across the country right now. But couldn't we have rallies instead for like, hey, let's stop homelessness? Let's have large rallies all across the country to for Medicare for all, getting rid of student debt, rebuilding our infrastructure fighting climate change. Let's make that a real thing to protest. Because, yeah, protest Trump. I get it. Trump's the bad guy. He's put an ugly face on everything. But we get rid of Trump. We're not getting rid of the problem. Because, yeah, Trump could get kicked out of office or he could be defeated in the 2020 election cycle. But that's, Beat him in the election. Yeah, right, right, right. But hold on. There's a bigger picture to this. And that is you beat Trump, but that's not going to stop somebody like Trump, a much more competent version of Trump, from coming into office somewhere in the far future if we don't get money out of politics, if we don't end this neoliberal system. And for once, you know, there's very few people who have the courage to step up and do the right thing. One of them is Senator Bernie Sanders. The other one is Representative Tulsi Gabbard. And I commend her courage. I, I'm grateful that she was consistent and how she voted, choosing to abstain from voting and actually calling to censure President Trump instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we got to get this corrupt system in check. Otherwise, somebody like Trump, more competent, will come into office. And then that's the end for a lot of us.